Hello everyone, welcome to today's session on configuring authentication in Azure App Services with Microsoft Intra ID. So in today's session, we are going to talk about um, how to create authentication in Azure App Services and uh, how to play with it, different configurations and different uh, settings of uh, uh, settings around uh, setting up the authentication and uh, around the app page that we are going to create and what is the app page and it's in related services so let's move ahead so before we move ahead let's briefly talk about the speaker profile so uh, my name is Abhishek Jalan and my role is senior Azure DevOps engineer. I am based in UK. Uh, I am currently having 20 plus active Azure certification and 30 plus active hyper various hyper scalar certifications. Um, this is the link to my LinkedIn profile. If you want, you can join me there. So let's talk about why authentication is important in app services. So app services are the powerful uh, platform as a service offering uh, uh, by Microsoft Azure. Um, basically, this enables us um, to deploy and host our web apps quickly without worrying about the underlying architecture and underlying op operating systems uh, as those are uh, taken care by Microsoft under the shared responsibility principle. So why is the authentication important? So without proper authentication, your apps are vulnerable. Uh, anyone can have unauthorized access to your uh, apps, your data, and this can cause uh, data breaches or other security risk. So uh, once you implement proper authentication, uh, your apps can be secure. This means only verified users are accessing your users. Uh, accessing your application compliance uh, there are various com um, compliance norms uh, based on the st uh, industry standards that can be gdpr hipaa and many others and in, by implementing proper controls you can have proper authorization implemented also uh, on top of the authentication uh for those who don't understand what what i mean by proper authorization and authentication is authentication is permitting only the verified users onto your application and by authorization uh, we mean that um, uh, what actions those users can be able to perform on your application uh, by that uh, basically there can be an administrator who who may be allowed to do various administrator roles on your application uh, he can modif modify master master settings of your application but there can be other users who simply have access to the modules that are specific to their role so that can those type of granular access can be controlled now what is microsoft intra id so uh, microsoft intra id is the identity platform that is offered by microsoft uh, basically so there can there are various multiple identity platforms existing like you can use uh, social media like you can use google you can use my uh, you can use facebook you can use linkedin or there can be third party uh, identity platform as well so let's start with the overview so authentication with microsoft intra id in azure app services basically it is a cloud as we already discussed it is a cloud identity service by microsoft and it allows customers to sign into your application using their microsoft identities or their microsoft social accounts now there are two types of scenarios uh, for authentication uh, it totally depends on your need uh, depending on need it can be a workforce application or a customer facing application so the difference between workforce application and customer facing applications is workforce applications are meant to be used by your internal workforce or your internal customers right uh, because there can be many organization who might be 
uh, having various verticals so one vertical might be hosting the application and other vertical might be using for example uh, an organization must be maybe having a travel desk or uh, some hr activity hr portal or something like that uh, so for them um, HR, HR services or administrator services might be hosting the application but the normal employees might be using those application for availing uh, either the HR services or various other administrator services uh, okay so let's move ahead so before we move ahead to the uh, practicality of implementation there are a few prerequisites you should be having a valid as your subscription and for setting up the authentication you should already have a app service that is created and existing uh, but this is not a very hard requirement just for uh, today's demo we have because we are mainly uh, focused on setting up the authentication that's why we are uh, using this otherwise authentication can be enabled while creating the app service also So how do you configure the authentication in practical on your web apps? So you go to app service you go to setting module and you Go to authentication tab and then you click on auth enable authentication and in the drop down there would be several other identity provider uh, but today's topic is setting up using microsoft intra id so we will select microsoft as the identity provider once we do that we can select uh, whether we want to use it for single tenant or multi multiple tenant uh, single tenant is for internal users and multiple tenant is for business or school users now once you set up this you can set up the permission uh, permission is basically uh, the authorization controls that you want your you authorized user to have on your application for today's demo we are set we would be going only with the read permission okay once you are done with setting up the authentication you can further secure uh, or play with your uh, application uh, using the app regis so once you want to play with it you go to app registrations and go to manage expose an api and there would be a default application id uh, that serves as uh, identifier for your application but uh, you can play with it it accepts both the protocol that is api and https uh, depending on the need you can play with it um, there are secrets if you want uh, you can update the secrets best practices uh, you store the secret value uh, using the key vault so that if you are passing it to any third party application you don't pass the actual value of the secret you pass the uh, you pass the secret key from the key vault and that way your uh, keys are more secure and you save the effort uh, if there are any shared users or uh, exposed keys so you that can be controlled using key vault so let's directly go to labs now so uh, we have already logged into the azure portal and as we discussed i already have a web app created so let's go to this web app and we will go to settings we'll go to authentication and before anything else um, yeah so this is how uh, we are into authentication window now i will click on add identity provider to add identity provider for our application uh, we'll select microsoft as the identity provider uh, here we can choose the tenant uh, for workforce application or externally uh, configuration so if you have any b2c users uh, we can use external configuration and if we are using uh, you know, this uh, application only for internal users we can use workforce configuration that means all the users will be in the current tenant or the current directory so we will use the current workforce now you have to create the app registration now app registration 
can be created new at a time uh, if there are any ex <coughs> existing app registration in the directory we can use this or we can use the existing app registration by passing on their client id and secret also now why we want to create a new app registration and uh, why do we want to use an existing application so normally we prefer to create a, create a new app registrations so once a uh, identity provider is uh, being set up for a new web app uh, but uh, in some cases uh, it might be hard to maintain uh, different different app registration for different web apps so in that case uh, a company might decide to group uh, some related web apps with a common app registrations um, but is totally depending on the company's architecture and all uh, there can be one other scenario also uh, where uh, a developer or the devops engineer might not be having full permission on uh, uh, intra id uh, basically azure that, that was called azure active directory before uh, to create the app registration so there might be a third team who would be creating the app registration and sharing the detail with the developers or the devops engineer to use that particular approach so depending on your scenario you can uh, select the settings that you want so here in the name box we will drop the name of the approach so i will put a dummy name here uh, the, then I will set up the password expiration uh, for for the client secret. Let's say I set up it to 12 months. Uh, I want to set up it for sing, uh, single tenant in the current directory. Uh, and I will leave rest all setting as it is. This is the authorization permission that my users will be having. And I will create this approach. Okay, now I will rotate the secret. Sometime it may ask. So once the secret is rotated, it will be fine. It will be secured. So now our authentication has been created. Now let's try to browse the application. So I'm trying to browse the application now and it is asking me permission to the app reach. So I am giving consent and I can browse the application because I am already added to the directory. If I show you my directory, I might already add it as a user to the directory. Okay, now let's go to app registrations and play with it. So this is the app reg that we created. Uh, you can also verify it here. Yeah, so this is the app reg. So if you have multiple web apps and you want to identify uh, which web app correspond to which uh, app registrations, you can uh, verify the same from the authentication. It is a direct link uh, basically. Okay, so if I go to this app registrations and you go to expose an API. So here is the application ID. So you want, if you want to update uh, this application ID, you can do this. Uh, there is a, there are various other protocols such as HTTPS also. So it accepts that you can play with it. Uh, if you want, you can update the scope depending on totally depending on your requirement. Um, there are various uh, roles and administrator you can sell you can define various roles uh, what the ident what the authenticated users have the roles you can play with it you can define owner for this average let's say I define myself as the owner of this so I can define it uh, there are various app roles so if you want uh, more control on what users what like suppose your active directory has 1000 users and you don't want uh, 1000 users to have access to your app page and ultimately to your um, web app you can define a, a group a, a group in azure active 
intra id and then you can pass that as a approval so if i click on approval it accepts your member types as user or roles or your some other application other uh, already deployed application or maybe both of them whatever it is um, and then there are secrets so every average average are run by secrets basically and those secrets should be valid okay so if the secret expired users won't be able to uh users won't be able to access the uh, web apps using this average and secrets has to be renewed then yeah okay now let's go back to our presentation troubleshooting so for if you are getting stuck with uh, setting up the authentication or uh, facing issues with your app service you can enable now uh, monitoring and diagnostic in your azure there it's a separate topic but uh, yeah you know that uh, for debugging purpose or identifying the what is happening um, at your application you can enable diagnostic and monitoring on your app service uh, here are some common errors that occur during setup and their potential fixes so expired average uh, as already explained uh, once your app uh, average is expired i mean the secret that are uh, linked to your average are expired and there are no existing valid secret your average will stop working and your users won't be able to authenticate using your average and your web app will ultimately be unusable nobody be able to use the app uh, your web app ultimately so so if you are getting um, errors while accessing your web app check if the if it has valid secrets network restrictions uh, so there can be a chance where your uh, uh, you are authenticated to your web app but your uh, web app is uh, network restricted so uh, you may not be able to reach um, your web app ultimately because it is not exposed for public or it may not be ex it may be secured using various network rules or maybe various nsg rules so you have to verify that also uh, log storage so one more uh, common issue is the log storage basically uh, it occurs basically when your app uh, web app is behind the secure network and you want to want to uh, use the web apps it might uh, throw error sometimes because your uh, uh, in because if your storage account the log storage account is behind the network uh, basically uh, your web app might not be able to uh, reach out uh, to the file share for storing in web app specific logs so in that case you use uh, uh, a specific uh, file share that are created for your uh, web app uh, for accessing uh, providing permission to web app to write its web logs there okay so conclusion in today's session we learned about uh, uh, securing our web app using authentication uh, summary of the key configuration step ensure that you have an existing app service you create a new app registration or use an existing app registration if you wish and you set up the proper permissions for more details and for deeper learning you can refer to the mentioned links thank you